Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. We had 10 different drivers seeing action over the weekend. We start off with Anthony Alfredo, who was at Talladega Super Speedway for the NASCAR Xfinity Ag Pro 300. Anthony started the race from the sixth position and brought home a 12th place finish in a typical wild race at the 2.6 mile high speed oval. Let's get a post-race recap from Anthony. Tough race today here at Talladega Super Speedway. I think we wound up 15th in uh, the end, but it was definitely challenging, especially after some damage late in stage three, I think it was. But we had a really fast Seco building systems, Chevrolet Camaro. I think it was as fast as Xfinity Internet once again. Uh, we just have really fast cars just about every week, especially at the Super Speedway. So I was really pumped about this race. I know the team was as well. Everyone on the crew did an awesome job and uh, made the right adjustments, had the right strategy. Just couldn't quite get up front when we needed to. Um, made a lot of moves that you need to make to see how they work out for you so that you know uh, if it's gonna be worth it or not when it comes down to the end of the race. And I made those moves. Uh, my spotter Derek Nealon and I worked through a bunch of things and uh, I actually wouldn't take back anything we did. I think it all came down to uh, the friends or people we had behind us, so to speak, which I've come to learn is just about the first, uh, the, the biggest thing uh, in super speedway racing that's necessary to win. So uh, not having those pushers when you needed them and stuff like that was definitely a challenge. And uh, track position doesn't mean a whole lot here because things change so fast. I think I drove from dead last up to the top five at one point after the damage and dropped right back to uh, probably 20th or so and back up to 13th by the end. And uh, it's crazy how fast things change. It's definitely challenging, but uh, learned a bunch today, but we came here to win, so I can't say that I'm not disappointed. After the damage, I'm not sure we would have been able to lead the race and be out in clean air, but we probably uh, could have been tucked up behind someone, and I would have been uh, content with second or third at that point, which uh, we had plenty of speed to do. Like I said, when we were in the draft, the damage didn't seem to be too big of a problem. Uh, but Derek Neen did a great job on the stand like usual. Uh, just got shucked out at the end when we were uh, around the top five and looking to have a successful run. But that's a part of super speedway racing. I think in racing a lot of people say shoulda, woulda, coulda. And that is most applicable to this type of racing for sure. Any of these play tracks you come to, uh, so much can happen. So much can change so quickly. And you just do all you can and see where you stack up at the end of things. That's all you can do is, is whatever's in your control. So like I said, proud of our effort. Thankful to be a part of this team at Richard Childress Racing. Very grateful to have Seco Building Systems on board. They've been a long time partner of mine. I hope I gave them a great showing and everyone enjoyed the race today on NBC Sports. Look forward to the next one. We've got two races left this year, Kansas and Texas, both intermediate tracks, which I love, and we tend to have a lot of speed at. So I'm looking forward to those, and thank you, everyone, for your support. Up next for Anthony, Kansas Speedway on October the 17th. Jesse Love returned to the dirt at Tri-City Speedway in my hometown of Granite City, Illinois, in his number 97 KKM Power Midget for two nights of racing in the Gold Crown Nationals. I personally drove the race car at this track for years, but I was younger, but nothing like this. Let's take a hot lap with Jesse. results. On night one, Jesse brought home a 10th place finish in the A main. Unfortunately, night two was rained out. Up next for Jesse, Arkham Menard Series at Five Flag Speedway in Pensacola, Florida this Saturday. Connor Mozak was at Florence Motor Speedway for the Cars Tour Aaron's 250. Connor qualified his number 88 Junior Motorsports Chevrolet in 11th and was running six when on lap 42 the two lead cars got together and Connor suffered severe front end damage when everyone checked up, ending his night early. This was Connor's first DNF of the year and more than likely taking him out of the championship hunt. Up next for Connor, Cars Tour at Greenville Pickens Speedway on October 17th. 
Bryce Bazanson was at Yakima Speedway for the 150 lap fall classic where he qualified ninth in a stacked field of 21 cars. Bryce was running in the top 10 before suffering what would eventually turn into a flat tire as he had to go off track to avoid several cars that had wrecked in front of him. Bryce had to pit under green for repairs and went 10 laps down but he still fought his way back to a 13th place finish. Caden Honeycutt took the number 10 Red Rocket Pro Mod to Kennendale Speedway Park in search of the $1,500 to win check. Let's get a post-race recap directly from the driver. What's up guys? We just got done at Kennendale Speedway Park and we started 12th in our B main, which was pretty much last. Uh, there was 13 cars in our B main and got up to fifth and we still started 20th in the A main. Um, but man, it was rough. It was, the B main was a little rough. I mean, it knocked the body off of it almost completely. So we had to go and fix everything, make sure it was good. And um, we, just, we just did the best we could. And luckily there was uh, the top side in one and two, but not so much in three and four. So we couldn't make up much spots as we wanted to. But we still got a top five and we finished fifth. So I can't, I can't really complain. It was just a good race. The car was awesome, just as usual. Um, but wish we had a little luck in the B main, but that's what happens when you show up on the day of the show and not do the two day deal. Um, but it, it's, it's no big deal. We'll, uh, move on to go to the next one and, uh, we'll see what we're still indecisive where we want to go next. So we'll see what we want to do, but it was a great top five from 20th last night. So I'm, I'm, I'm so very excited. This young man is a wheel man. Up next for Caden, Arc La Texas Speedway in Vivian, Louisiana in the Pro Mod on October 10th. That has to be the craziest name for a racetrack that I've ever heard. Haley Constance was at Evergreen Speedway for her last Junior Hornet race of the year. She qualified on the pole, had to start ninth in her heat due to the inverse, and finished fifth. In the A main, she was running second, went on a late race restart, got clipped by another car, and ended up fourth. Up next for Haley, 600 micro sprints at Lemoore Raceway for the California Cup, October 29th through the 30th. Joey East went to Madera Speedway this weekend with only testing the number 54 car for Nate Clower Motorsports in mind. But the car performed so well, they decided to compete in the $10,000 to win Nutta Pro Late Model Series race. Joey qualified seventh and finished the 150 lap event in seventh against the best of the best late model drivers from the West Coast. Up next for Joey, Arca Menard Series at Kern County Raceway on October 25th. Jake Bowman pulled double duty at Madera Speedway over the weekend, running in both the 5150 Junior Late Model Series as well as the Nut Up Pro Late Model Series. Jake qualified sixth in the junior late model and finished on the podium in third. In the pro late model race, the 13-year-old Huntington Beach driver qualified his way into the A main and finished 12th. And as I said earlier, this race attracted the top teams and drivers from the West Coast. Up next for Jake, championship week in the junior late model series at Madera Speedway on October 17th. Cassidy Hines competed in twin feature races at Colorado National Speedway in her pro truck Saturday night. Cassidy finished third in the first feature and fifth in the second feature. Let's hear a race recap directly from the driver. Hi everyone, last night was championship night at Colorado National Speedway in the Snap-on Tools Pro Trucks. I raced two mains last night and in the first main I finished third after being spun into another truck causing me to get some front end damage. We did get the front end fixed and got back out for the second main. In the second main I finished fifth after running over some debris during a caution and getting a flat tire in my right rear. I would like to thank all of my sponsors, Frontier Restoration, SunWest Services, Impacted Wraps and Graphics, LL Acousticals, Ducks Unlimited, Race Face Brand Development, and the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation for all of their help. And I would like to thank my crew, my dad, my mom, 
um, Enoch, Bo, and my papa for all of their help too. And congratulations to Travis Rowe on Rookie of the Year. Now Cassidy won two races this year and lost Rookie of the Year by one point, despite missing three races due to commitments in the 5150 Junior Late Model Series at Madera Speedway. Up next for Cassidy, the final race of the year at Madera Speedway on October 17th. Brody Moore was also at Madera Speedway for round eight of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series. Brody qualified 11th and ran in the top 10 for the entire race, eventually finishing in ninth place. Up next for Brody, Championship Weekend at Madera Speedway, October 17th. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel from your favorite Race Face Driver. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite Race Face Drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.